this is the 2016 to 17 introdu introduction to mechanical and electronic engineering exam uh, it's the mechanical exam and this is question one uh, question one a says what are the units of power express these units in terms of SI units um, so some part of this is just about knowing the units of power are watts and that's represented by W the system in the standard um, sort of metric system of units capital W is power in watts and then it says um, express these units in terms of SI uh, units SI base units and it wants it in kilograms meters and seconds here you have to remember the equations that um, relate power to other things and then work through and the really important thing is that the units on the left hand side of an equation must equal the units on the right hand side of an equation so for example um, we can say power equals energy divided by time um, and that will mean that one watt equals one joule divided by one second. Um, now we need to work out how to express a joule in terms of kilograms, meters and seconds. Um, for that we need something about energy. Um, energy is work done and that equals force times distance and therefore one joule equals one newton times one meter. Well this is good now we can get rid of joules there but we still got newtons and we wanted kilograms meters and seconds so we could finish by saying um, force equals mass times acceleration and these are all equations that you know and have used in other contexts here we're just using them to sort of play around with the dimensions until we can get um, everything represented in kilograms, meters and seconds. So force equals mass times acceleration means one newton equals one kilogram times one meter per second per second. That's the units of mass, that's the units of acceleration. Um, putting all of this together we get that one watt equals one a joule which is a newton times meter which is kilograms times meters per second per second times meters divided by one second equals one kilogram square meter per second cubed and that's the answer um, and what I might just do is to find a ruler just to make it clear that that's my answer just going to underline it there um, and move on to part B so part B says an object is thrown straight upwards at four meters per second by considering the conversion from kinetic energy to gravitational potential energy or otherwise the object will reach um, I'm going to do it the way that's suggested in the question. Usually if the question suggests something that will be a fairly sensible way to go about it. So initially we throw this object upwards and it's got all kinetic energy. Um, so the initial kinetic energy equals one half mv squared and we know v equals four and we don't know m so that equals a half times m times 4 squared which equals 8m and then it says think about how that's converted to gravitational potential energy so the final gravitational potential energy equals mg 
h equals 10 m h. We're told to use 10 for gravity. Therefore, we get that 8 m equals 10 m h. The m's on both sides cancel and h equals 8 over 10 equals 0 0.8 meters. And that's the final answer there. Um, so that is part A and B complete. And then part C says a cable is wound onto a drum. Sorry, a cable that's wound onto a drum is used to lift a load of 300 kilograms through a height of 12 meters. The cable itself is heavy and has a mass of 7 kilograms per meter. The total mass to be lifted is therefore m equals 300 plus 7l, where l is the length of cable still unreeled. Um, by plotting a graph of force against displacement or otherwise, find the total work done in lifting the load. Um, OK, so let's just take a look at this question. And um, I guess it's helpful sometimes just to sketch out an idea of what's happening here. So you've got a drum with a cable feeding off it. And this weight is 300 kilograms, and this weight is 7 kilograms per meter. And initially, you're lifting through a height of 12 meters. Um, initially, the, the full 12 meters is unreeled, so there are 12 times seven kilograms of cable to be lifted. And in the final situation, at the end of all of this, you've reeled the whole thing in. So in the final state, zero kilograms of cable to be lifted. Um, we're also given this equation that m, the total mass, equals 300 plus 7l, where l is the length of cable still unreeled. So l starts at 12 and um, finishes at 0. That's the same information, I guess, in two different ways. Um, so I've got a good idea now about what's happening. And it says plot a graph of force against displacement. So let's just do that. Um, worth making a side note here. We're interested in force. Force in this problem is all about weight, which equals mass times gravity. And we're using g equals 10. meters per second per second. So a graph of force against displacement, well this is displacement, and this is force. Um, the initial force, we've said at that stage we're lifting the weight and we're lifting this 12 times 7 kilograms of cable. 12 times 7 is 84 kilograms, so we've got uh, W equals, um, well, I'll write it all out. It's 300 plus 12 times 7 multiplied by gravity, which is 10. And that equals 3840 newtons when you multiply it through. The final force, now we no longer have to lift the cable. It's all reeled in. Uh, so this equals 300 times 10 which equals 3,000 newtons. And in between, because we've got this um, relationship here, one way, what I can tell from this relationship is that it's going to be a straight line relationship between mass and uh, the length of cable that's still unreeled. You can think of this as being like 
y equals mx plus c, um, but on a slightly different graph. And so this is what we call a linear relationship, which means there's a straight line. Um, so that means that my answer, or my force displacement graph, is going to be a straight line that goes from 3, 8, 4, 0 to 3,000, and that is a displacement of 12 meters, and that is a displacement of 0 meters. So that's the force that must be transmitted through the cable as it's reeled in from 0 to 12 meters. The final thing that I need to know is that the work done is the area under the graph. And that is, if I call that 1 and that 2, area 1 plus area 2. Um, area 1 is a triangle with height 840 and base 12. Area of a triangle is a half base times height, a half times, well, height times base, 840 times 12, doesn't matter which order I do them in. Area 2 is a rectangle with height 3000 and width 12, so that has area 3000 times 12. And now, at this stage, you can go to a calculator. At any stage, you can go to a calculator, but at this stage, I'm going to go to my calculator. 840 times 12 divided by 2 plus 3000 times 12, 41040. Um, joules, this is a work done, and I'm going to say that's 41.0 kilojoules to three significant figures. Um, you don't have to represent it as 41.0 kilojoules, but um, that seems like a, a reasonable thing to go with. And that is now the complete answer.